glare coming through the shop. It's another new day. Take the depleted aerosol cans and poke a hole in it. 7-3 Mike had one. And he'd go over there and he'd just squeeze it real quick. And it punched a hole in it and made it safe to, uh, you know, scrap. I figure since I'm holding it and I was making a video, I wanted to ask you guys. Because you guys know just about everything. Going to the spray cabinet. That, there is no way that paint's going to hold up. This is the paint we need an oven for. Because that... Y pipe is not baked on. It's just from heat cycles of the engine. Imagine if we baked it on. Okay. This is, the, I guess you could, well, I don't know what this is. Is this day one? Day one of uh, Super Duty service again? Because we're kind of almost set up. Got a job going right now. Need to tear it apart. Got another job going over there. Another job going right there. I guess you could say another job going over there. She's just waiting to be petted. She sleeps in the shop. Her and Champ both stay out here. They love that surfacer bed. Right there, that combo surfacer bed. You guys think we should uh, expose the mains? Or wait and let the parts tell the story? I don't know. Bummer, because when we expose it, that just means we're, I mean, I guess it is every single freaking part taken apart on this thing, which means front covers all need to be detailed, the block, the bed plate, everything needs to be ridiculously clean because the anaerobic is really good for staying, not good whatsoever at all for taking it off. Generally, you can scrape it off like hard plastic. It turns to dust and... Seal's really good, but I'm not at all excited about taking it apart. There's that candy-coated M&M right there. Dirty. Let's look on this side. Engine mounts didn't hold up too well. Whoa, what's that? Bed plate leak? Bed plate seep? Looks like an oil dipstick seep. So that means we need to do something different there. Hmm. We could anaerobic that thing. I guess if that's the only leak point the oil dipstick to, we're, we could be doing a lot worse. There's our rocker box gasket mating surface. Hard to tell though, because I mean, it kind of looks like it might've had some there. Glow plug hole leaking or something probably. Glow plugs definitely look like they're leaking, but with the failure that just happened and injector job done a couple times since it broke. Kind of justified to be a little wet. I mean, it's a machine, you know. Do the best we can, make it run the best it can, and hope everybody laughs and smiles at the end. Take a look at that. We must have done that, huh? Put a new engine harness on it. 07 saw, you can tell because of where the temp sensor plugs are, those big, the ends, the harness ends. Now, from what Joey has told me, that box right up there is from his searching and looking all over for engine harnesses. Is that the last one? Yeah. There's no more engine harnesses. Not from Ford. Not from Ford. Being able to get one of these harnesses like this cannot happen anymore. Huh. I have one brand new in the box. Uh, good luck. Good luck buying that. I, I don't think it's possible. It's like an Egyptian artifact right there. That's almost priceless. I am not gonna take any of this block apart right there. I'm gonna take the banjo fittings off and... What should I do there? Okay, I'm not, I haven't decided that, but I'm gonna leave as many fittings as I possibly can straight or tight. I mean, I spent a little bit of time on this to get it all straightened up to get the bins right so that it actually goes through the intake right there and goes up and clears and doesn't hit anything. I mean, it looks like it was made that way. Yeah, good freaking luck. Open yours up from the box and let's see how your shit lines up because it ain't you know, this, uh, kind of close, kind of, kind of. Chris did lose a coolant pump too in this amount of time. And the story with injectors. Okay, let's talk about injectors. Because if uh, the video won, I, from the very first day, from before I ever even heard the truck start, I was banging on aftermarket injectors. From, I mean, that, and, and I don't know if everybody followed the timeline of this. This was, uh, 
I don't know what, 20 months ago? Something like that. It was a couple, almost a couple years ago. So, and I was banging on those injectors, banging on them. I, I was not thrilled about it. And we wound up getting an extra one and we did exactly what I said I didn't want to do at the very beginning of the video. We did it in like video, whatever, 15 or something. We put the injectors in it and swapped one around, did not do a whole set of injectors. And it left Super Duty Service with uh, a number, what, five. That was not most ideal. And I really have not driven it. Chris took it home and he put a full set of Ford Remans in it. And I guess it was, it, it, it was done, it was good. Now, I never even drove it with the full set of, of remands in it. So, I don't know. You know, if we're going to go through and put $3,500 connecting rods and big push rods and all kinds of stuff in an engine, yeah, Chris would have to know how to touch it. Have to know how to mess with it. Because, I mean, like this right here. I mean, this is a OE replacement. It is this spring. But would you keep using SBI? What would you guys do? I mean... You know, there's SBI and there's Qualcast. And, and then for springs, I mean, cost. Cost versus benefit, okay? A whole set of springs, a whole set of push rods from Ford's, 100 bucks. Whole set of push rods from Manton, the baddest son of a gun you can get, 300 bucks. Something, maybe, I don't know. Okay, don't, don't price my stuff for him, for them. Hmm. So if springs... You know, we've already had run-ins with push rods, push rods breaking, smacking, bending, bowing, doing all kinds of crazy crap. So uh, on the bigger ones, we always now opt to put big push rods in, but I haven't put any big springs in. Hmm. Guess I might need to go to spring school and figure out how much stuff I can learn about springs. You know, anytime something breaks and bangs us in the head we kind of want to learn about it maybe it won't bang us in the head again maybe this was something if that is just a spring i mean i don't know you know do we need to freaking put a pressure tester on it and magna flux it all at the same time like magna flux it while we're testing the load i don't know maybe maybe that's a new machine they need to make they need to invent that this is one failure okay this is one valve spring we have probably, I've probably opened up and installed 10,000 SBI items. Probably, I don't even know, actually. I have no idea for a lot, a whole bunch. And this is the first, like, blatantly smack in the face failure. I always thought what would happen would be a head would break off a valve, is what I always figured. I'm putting these valves in, these SBI. Are they going to hold up? But I, I didn't make them. I don't know how the heck they make them. Is this a... And so the spring, the spring would be the best case scenario for us to actually save the block. I mean, it would be. Because if a valve head broke off, the, the block cylinder is going to be trash. So we got the kids here. And they're going to take care of this stack of white pipes for us. They're going to try, right? Yeah. Push in. Oh, there you go. You got it. So that's that's their project this morning. They're doing a great job. Yeah. Oh, let me get out of Gabe's way here. He's fighting that goofy air hose. All right. Work hard. Yep. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. So, uh, go to go to one. I put the first down a push on it. I probably gave you a crappy bit. All right, fine. Take it off. Get a different bit. That was done. I guess he had the right purse set down. Got a bigger bit. This is 03 Wi Fi. Keep going. It'll pop, we'll know. Keep going, keep going. 
going. You'll hear the drill change too. You'll hear it. It'll start let off when it starts to change. You'll hear it. Oh my god, there he <laughs> He did it! That little bit here. It's like beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very, very beautiful. Showing him how to do those cone flanges. Yeah! Lot, hey, put it close to your body. It sucks getting that close to the wheel, but to keep it from bouncing like that, because <laughs> it'll, it'll kind of yeah. shake you a little bit. Got the army working. Love it. And they're having fun doing it too. The 10 millimeter is the most lost. What are you looking for? 10. You're looking for found a 10 millimeter? One. Oh, you found one. Oh, he found it. Good job. Okay, call off search party. Okay, we're gonna try something new here. Try to save Jay some time. Gabe is about to cut these. I never really cut them. I always let Jay cut them for the flex joints cut this out. I'm going to have him cut it and leave this because I think Jay is pretty picky at where he wants it cut at. So we're just going to cut this so they can polish the rest of them. Like I said, so I don't really have a dead set way to do this, but I kind of walk you guys around in a little bit. Hey, get out of the way. I can't see. No, you're supposed to say that to me. Hey, get out of the way. I can't see. I don't care if you if the video can see. I need to see what we cut. Make sure, okay, now when you pull the trigger, yeah. lift it up off of it. Do yeah. Not. Oh, yeah. Or it'll bite. Uh, watch your cuss words. You're not old enough to cuss. <laughs> Let's see. I don't Should we tighten it? You think about tightening it? I think it'd be better. You push it up. Yeah. Like that, right there? Yeah. Not all the way. Yeah, let's just let's make sure that. you can angle it. Can you get it on the angle now? Yeah. I think that's good, just to be safe. Watch this. Oh. You know what? I'm gonna let Gabe play with it and mess with it. And let's just, it's uh, its like those uh, Chinese puzzles that are on the table of Cracker Barrel. If you get it just right, it will cut all of them. <laughs> what might be a good idea would be just to cut, we'll buy ourselves two cuts, cut it just smooth in half. Smooth in half? Cut it smooth in half and go back and cut it again. That might make it. Oh, that one too? That would figure out which one would be the best to cut first. I think that one would probably be the best. Yeah. Cut that one first and it'll give because you all kinds of Because I'm, when I'm cutting this one, I'm hitting, I want to hit that. You're going to cut that and then it'll trash the whole thing, yeah. huh? Okay, we'll just let him uh, go and... And now can you see here too? Right here. Yeah. Oh. See if you can get past it. Maybe you can cut it on a little angle. It's okay. But just, just when it goes on an angle, when you start the cut, leave it on that angle for the whole cut right yeah you don't have to cut it straight you might have a hand like somewhere yeah. down here and or, well watch that watch that like yeah. that about like that right there yeah. that'll do it right there and it doesn't like i said you can move it a little further away and go like that mm -hmm. will it clear mm -hmm. yeah barely barely's good <laughs> just watch that and make sure it all stays right there when you're yeah. cutting get comfy a little bit don't don't just pull Aww. Let's see how it goes. Pay attention to all your lines. Uh -huh. Remember, just commit. Take your time, take your time. Just let it cut. Yeah. Don't force it. Be ready when it pops loose because the other side's going to roll around. Look at that.
using every tool in the shop dang there aren't they let's see what it looks like how's it look almost there it's almost there yeah so we're gonna break this down power steering off we're gonna start tearing it i found a bolt looks like it could go maybe to regulator return possibly maybe Huh. Is it? Little bitty guy. Put that in the extra parts. Something was a little wet right here. Kind of looks like it's leaking from inside of it. Doesn't it? Uh, let's see. Let me show you. Right there. And it's like dry everywhere around it. Yeah, so put a cam sensor on the left. We're going to put a cam sensor in it. Is crank sensor dry? It looks dry. I mean, these should be good. We, but that one with the leak on it. I Yeah, we're not riding with that. I really would like to keep as much fuel off the harness as possible. So cam sensor is still down in there. I don't think I'm going to fish that out of there. Right now, I already disconnected the fuel lines. And I'm going to take the factory lines off, get them out of the way. And then ideally, I really do want to just leave all this together and pop the banjos and lift the whole spider regulated return off in one shot. Let's see if that works. Wipe pipe came off pretty easy. No real surprises. Exhaust came apart right there. If you ever want to take that down pipe off, you really need to cut it here and put a band clamp right there. That way you can separate it and then pull the down pipe out from underneath the truck. Otherwise, you're just, you got the cross member. It's wet where the broken valve spring is. Dry side's dry, wet side's wet. Getting a little closer. Look at the turbo pedestal and pump cover. Look how everything held up. Does not look bad. Not for being in service for quite a while. So we're getting the back off and regulated return is about to lift off as soon as I take the back banjos off. It'll be all one piece. That'll be nice. Made a mess. Oh man. You got a drain pan down there. You should catch it. It is. Fuel pouring out of it. No, a couple drips. Okay. Find a home for it. Look at us being cocky. Put all the rubber grommets back on, the ones that can be. <laughs> Tearing it down still. I think we got a habit of showing the second most of everything. So this will be the second most pushpin broken on a six liter. Is this one that connects the main engine harness to the Fickham harness? Take your pushpin puller and put one behind it right there. Okay? See that? That's pretty secure. Take your other one, kind of pull it out and get it back behind there. Now I might need to, to help it a little. That thing is up there tight. I mean, I could have went on the other side, but right there. Okay, now I got one in, both of them. Now when you pull this apart, right? Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh. Oh, yeah, I don't break this freaking pig tail. Did y'all just leave me alone already? I'm just trying to sleep. He doesn't even flinch. Good night. You know, that right there is probably an indication that I'm tightening the intake too much. Too much. Uh, how much squeeze do you guys put on the intake? I tighten it down until it's tight. It's probably about 15, 17 foot pounds probably. Uh, they call for 10, so you can go down and just lightly press it. So I probably have been guilty of tightening intakes too tight. That's a fine line because you could wind up tightening it too loose. Then you're leaking coolant. Yeah. Air ain't so bad. I mean, I guess you can leak a little air and it still run, but you ain't gonna leak no coolant. You leak coolant here in the front cover, you're you're wondering why. I will just get the intake off the back here. 
Now, I looked down in there. I didn't show you that. But make sure there's no crap here to fall in the intake. Other... First thing is to just vacuum it just to knock anything loose because I'm going to do this right now. Now, this little ledge, see all this stuff where the intake gasket was not? That ledge right there. Now, if I hold the shot back in front of it, I can just break it, suck that off. Now, at least I can wipe it and I don't have any solid. See that one, how dirty it is? don't really want to spray it directly on But he sprayed a little brake clean on his towel. You guys missed that. And then I'll just wipe it down. Make sure it's somewhat dirt free. And then right now, since we're not actually going here, we're leaving this one on. Got these little magnets we can put on here. And nice and safe. Uh, this, this cylinder head's coming off. I don't care if stuff falls in there or not. I don't know either. So that IPR valve was pretty tight. Pretty Let's see nice. how the end looks. It'll have to drain down a little bit, but not bad. Pretty good. Got your chrome tin. On the BB manifold. I don't know oh, that you guys should watch him dead. do that. Well, I just put that battery in there. I there was something messed up with it. Ah. It's a malfunctioner. <clears throat> hmm. Maybe it's the Milwaukee. Take the outsides off. Leave the middles in. I'm going to leave the other manifold on for right now. See, that one's more in the center. Whoa, what was that? Bolt. That Milwaukee decided to work, so... Oh, are you serious? You buster. Here, take this. You guys can fill apart. You think there's still fuel in it? How do they look? The gaskets? They look all right. Looks like they sealed up. They was pretty much doing their job. Gaskets yep. Quick shot of brake cleaning down there. I also scraped around it with a putty knife. It's clean real good and get all this stuff washed out with it. You do it with a shop back right there, it sucks the brake clean right up, takes all the dirt with it. It's wonderful. Ejector O-rings, boy, they're just you know how anybody gets along without knowing how to do this. Take a 90 degree pick and hook it. See that I got a hold of it? That little notch right there is what well I'll show you putting it back on and then just work it around. Put your finger on it, locks on, it doesn't fly around. Right here, take the take the 90 degree, go away from the screen like that, put your finger on it, and just pull it off. Same thing here, away from the screen, I don't know, I just always do. And then put your thumb in there, and then you won't lose it. Raise the blade up on top, push it in, pry, 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 board, crush washers, generally cut off all, come off pretty easy. And then we'll go use very, very lightly, we'll wire brush this nozzle, clean this nozzle up. Just barely at the touch. You see it just erasing everything? I mean, I'm just barely catching those buds out on the outside. Thank beauty. You got the notch right there. Put this underneath this lock right here, the hole down. Put this on that side of the notch. And you still got your 90 degree pick. Take the 90 degree pick and hook it and you want to get it through that notch. See right there's the easy part. Now you're, well that's the hard part without a pick. And then you can just spin the pick around and walk it and then just pull the pick right out. It's wonderful. Let's roll this O-ring over it and then you can spin it and make sure that it's relaxed. But I would squeeze it like this, push it that way. See how I made a little gap right there? Just a little gap. And then take that and fold it over and then walk my way around it. Bam, done. Now, crush washer, the center raised area right there. See how it's up in the middle that goes towards the engine take a nine millimeter socket put it on there line it up and just push it on 
that's it there's your four injectors and then you can ring them and get them in oil and now we can submerge them and they are safe very very safe then bust all the tin head bolts and all the rocker bolts just bust them loose see how i can spin it reverse sequence here 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 yeah whatever take studs off always it's a nasty job but hold your hand on it because a lot of times you can get the nut to spin off the stud okay see how i held it it's a dirty freaking job but it works i'm not sure the drain pan is strategically placed good enough out see how yeah some of the washers stayed we'll look at it here in a minute. there was a washer on that one i believe yeah there's a washer on that, all of them probably ultrasonic piece to look at them they got grease all over them all right here's the damage here's the damage one side once we get it clean but that's the offending rocker right there I mean it's just a piece of stainless steel they normally would it looks pretty good <laughs> that's I mean it just looks like it just broke down and broke the spring okay so now on these push rods especially these are mantons and we're not doing the lifters well, who knows if we're doing the lifters, but I'll blow them out, pull them out. Yeah, look at them bad boys. Can you see it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So now they're they're dry because I already blew them out. So for the plan right now, the push rods are gonna go back in the original location. So that's how we're gonna set everything up. Rocker box, let's see how well this is sealed on. Let's see, do I got everything off? Here we go. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, they normally come off easier than that. I'm gonna stop it out. or keep going. Okay. Okay. I'll stop it. Dang it. There you go. I think it was sealed. Looks pretty good. See how it smashed all flat? Yeah. You know, not a whole bunch. Look, there's not a lot of seal up there. There is still a little though. Maybe I need to get a little better at cleaning it out. These are, to those of you not in the know, when they're chrome like that, that means they're ARP 625s, which means they're over Pricey. twice as much as the regular studs. I think those are $100 a bolt. Maybe. I have no, a price $50. Stuff. $50 a bolt. It's 50 bucks because they're a thousand bucks for the kid. They could be more now. Yeah, so that was 50 bucks for that. Because regular studs have gone up. And then so. it's 50 bucks and you need 20 of them. So it wouldn't be so bad if you don't need one. Okay, are we ready? Here, guys. Okay. We're not stuck. That's kind of how the excursion one came off. Not, Ooh. not stuck. Did yeah, you cut your yeah. finger? Hang on. I got a rag. Let it rest for a minute. About messed up. Wow, that is barely a witness mark. It is nowhere near as deep as what we thought. Well, that could be good then. We'll bring it up to the top and get a better look at it. Wow. Wow. 
I thought it was a hundred thousandths, but it ain't. Okay, let's look at the other witness marks. I mean, look at all the other witness marks. Oh! Yeah, yeah, by that I mean lack thereof witness marks, which means that chances are pretty good that that spring did it, because if my numbers would have been all stupid and wonky, you would expect to have had a couple of kisses going on on, on some of the other ones, because all these numbers are pretty much uniform. And that really is not that freaking bad. See where the head's at? Oh, it broke in two spots. The spring broke in two spots. It broke right there. Right there. And right there. Is it hollow? No. No, it's not hollow. But it did crack in two spots. Keeper still on. Oh, well, the guy don't even feel that. Honestly, it... Hmm. Let's get the head off here so we can look at it better. That's the offender right there. It's it's actually not as high up as we thought. I guess the bore the bore scope when we was going in there must have been looking at an angle down on it because it's it is below deck. So what catastrophic we thought we had? That is not that big of a witness mark. Well, let's get the head off so I can turn it better. Yeah, I thought it was really going to be a lot nice. worse than that. I want you want me to clean that off with some brake cleaner. You see can kind of see how. You kind of see it. It's got a little witness. Down there is quite a bit less. Not a lot. It almost got out of the way in time. Who knows how deep that is? Oh, I mean, we can figure it out. Yeah. Measure it. That is a ceramic coated piston. Looks like I can. I don't know. Definitely got a little bit of grainy crap going on where it did smack it. See how it's not smooth? It's like pitted. Huh. Hmm. That's pretty nice though, that none of the other ones are messed up. Now let's bar it down. Let's bar it over. You can let... You want to take the head off, We got... Kind of, but not yet. Yeah. Go let's ahead, bar... No, bar it out, bar it over. I'm worried that that bottom down there might have mushroomed it. And put some lines on it. The consequences... I mean, right there. I did put a little in it. A couple of little lines. I can't feel none of it. I did put some lines in it though. Mm -hmm. It didn't put, well, not really any on that side. What do you guys think? We do have some other lines right here. It's like the ring or the ring. Who knows? Maybe something got, I don't know. Because there really is no, I mean, there's no contamination. Doesn't look like anything came off anywhere. Everything is still together. Looks like it. Oh. The damn guide even still look. I could probably take that off by hand now. <laughs> almost. I can almost pull it out. Oh. No. Okay, but close enough. So it's together. It's all still there. Nothing came apart. But it did break the spring in two places. Yeah, that's broken. Dang it. I'm not going to run into the spray cabinet just yet. I want to get him 
get most of the oil off so that we can actually look at it, inspect it, touch it. So that's my goal right now. Pretty well right here, that's the broken one. I don't know if we will or not. Get in a towel. I can get you one. You're okay. I'll, I'll stop it. Okay. Let's see what happens. Do that. Okay. see anything really abnormal there's the re they said let's see uh there's that and that looks like a clean break just a snap and then we got the bottom so it broke in three places two places okay whatever yeah here set those down there there you go now you can see it. All right, now let's see if the valve even... Oh, my God, it's... Ain't nothing wrong with that valve. That thing is tight. Let's, we'll check it up in the valve owner and see if... Oh, let's... Now we'd have to put it in the machine to see if it's bent, see if the head's bent or anything. Go to the bottom half and look down here. Ah, oh, let's move this. Hmm. I mean hard for you to really see that seat but I bet you the reason why it wasn't sealing is because it had zero spring pressure on it it was just sitting there the other one needs to be taken apart too I wanted to see this one this is the one with the broken spring like I said we'll put it in the VR10 and that'll tell us if there's any bend in this valve but I'm not seeing a lot of damage look at that seat look at the guy crane it's all nasty in there and it did not seal. I, we filled the exhaust port with water and it was trickling out. But the water, you know, with no spring pressure, like none, the valve was just sitting there. It could move around. So there we go. Busted valve spring. We're going to, what would you guys do? Go with bigger springs? Go with the same? I mean, this is obviously just a failure. Just, uh, I mean, I've never had... SBI springs break before, never. And the fact there's two of them broke, it means maybe there was something going on with this spring here. Mm. What are you guys' thoughts? Throw us in the comments, let us know. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at these witness marks. I've taken so many trucks apart with pretty much witness marks about just like that, and nobody even knew. Like, there'd be witness marks all over the place on ones that I've taken apart. There's nothing on any of these, so, you know. <laughs> Looks like something there, but I think that's just from us wiping it off. Otherwise, you know, it would be round, right? Like that. Pistons look good. Got no witness marks on anywhere anywhere but the broken spring. Only the one 
because that's a valve bridge. This has a valve bridge on it. So if one spring breaks, you know the other one's gonna go right with it because the push, push rod's gonna try to open one side and the, the valve bridge is not gonna go level, right? It's, it's pushing like that. So it just makes it all go haywire. It would never seal. We would never have compression with a broken spring. It's just gonna let all the exhaust combustion yeah, just go. So, where would you go from here? I mean, honestly, I think we could roll with that. What are your guys' thoughts with that? You want to go ahead and spend a whole bunch of cash and break the thing down? I mean, we got to... I mean, a lot of this does not look bad. Green that thing. Let me look at my eyes. No, it's just dirty. just dirty not really a big failure point I could probably wipe it off let's see yeah kind of it might have got a bunch of combustion past it just needs to be touched off probably a honestly probably just a lap because it was only leaking because there was no spring on it because that's another thing to remember is these valves are flush they're level I want to go through and brush the guide. It's too dirty to brush now. Let's look down in there. Because I know a guide is something you're going to question too. Whether or not something bound up in the guide. You got a little bit of ripples in there, but a little bit of dirt. Definitely nothing that looks like it was like a catastrophic failure. You know, like it was bound up on it and galling. And of course, I need to clean it, but it moves fine. Like all the way good. So, hmm. I mean, it might just be a button up moment. I bet we put a spring on this sucker and back test it. I bet it goes good. I bet it does. Well, I'll probably go ahead and lap it, right? So what are your guys' thoughts? I mean, we can bar that down. It did look like there was a little lines, but we got some lines from the rings and stuff, or who knows what. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. We could analyze that for the rest of our lives. Why is that there? That'd be another one you'd want to, all the internet ninjas are going to say I screwed everything up, and that's ring in gap. That's probably just something introduced in the intake from, well, who knows? I mean, anything on the cylinder wall. The fact that there's so many of them would not be in gap of the ring. It would be like, uh, I mean, any, it could be anything. It could be quality of air going into it. Little air introduced in here and it gets in between the ring. Could be contaminants from the from when the engine was built. Which, I mean, I, I clean the heck out of it, but I mean, ain't nobody perfect. You know, this has ran for 30,000 miles. So, you know. Uh, let's bar that over so we can see the bottom of this one again. I mean, we could go and replace that lifter. Pretty good lines. I mean, we pull it out and ball hone it if you want. I wouldn't cut for that. No way in the world. Yeah. I mean, the, the cost is astronomical to go from either buttoning this up and riding with it, which it might be mushroomed out. I I mean, at that point, pull the piston out and, and clean off the side of the piston to where it's mushroomed out. I mean, that's a ceramic coated piston. Of course, I'm sure the coating is gone. What do you guys think? Tell me what the etiquette would be. What do you think? Break it all the way down, tear every single nut and bolt apart, and re reassemble the entire freaking thing? What do you guys think? I mean, uh, and then you say it depends on who's paying. That's the other question. Who's paying? You let me know. What do you guys think? I mean, what do you think? I mean, yeah. Springs. I mean, a $2 spring. I mean, this is one where I don't even know which way to go. You know what, we're gonna call SBI and tell them we want $15,000 over a $2 spring? 
I mean, go ahead. I mean, yeah, we can do that, but oh, what will it get you? It'll do nothing but make SBI look at you like an asshole, you know? So I don't know which way to go. I'm not sure yet. And the other one is just the decision. Which way are we gonna go? Are we gonna rebuild for that? I, I don't know. Drop a piston in it, ball hone it. Just ball hone that cylinder or take a shield. I've never done that before. I've never ball hone one cylinder with the rest of the engine together. I ain't never done that. Never have. I mean, I would probably put a ring compressor over the top and ball hone down into it. Just maybe five or six wipes, just a little. Just enough to scratch on that a little bit. And then new piston, a new ring. I mean, if we do that, that's a, uh, you know, we got a, a piston ceramic coated. We, we already got the numbers. We can go back and weight match it, but that's quite a bit. I mean, that's engine out, engine over there on the stand. So if we do that, if we break it down to replace the piston, this truck is gonna sit until I get the rod hone and until Cody's gets done. So until when that engine gets done, this one is available to go on that stand. Right now, I mean, or we could button it up. We could. I guarantee that'll seal. Guarantee. And there ain't no compression loss from that, I doubt. The only thing I'd be worried would be is if that mushroomed out the side of the piston. Because, I mean, we could bar it up, take it up to the top and take a real close look at it. Okay, there's our zero. We're at zero, now I'll move this over and put it there and there, hopefully on a couple of clean spots. Oops, sorry. I really hard to set this with my hand here. Slowly, you're there. Tap it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, right there. Keep going. 32. So 32 thousands protrusion. So that's good. Ain't nobody, can't nobody say a freaking thing about that. We got 32 thousands. Now uh, we're at 30. Now let's take this off and move it over here. Uh, check it right there. Okay, on that side of the piston, I'm actually a little lower. I'm showing 27 and a half. And then it's gonna be really hard to measure what the witness mark is. Now, the witness mark is next to nothing. I'm on the witness mark and I'm still at 27. So, maybe a thousand, there's 28. See where I'm at right there on the outside? And that's 28. And I go over here and go to the inside. And there's 27. So it's one thousandth of an inch. It looks like one thousandth. It looks like almost nothing. I mean, it's... Yeah, I know. When I touched it, I could hardly feel it yeah, with my fingernails. It's just almost nothing. So it barely touched. So the that that's the spring. That's the spring broke. Because nothing else... I mean, it, it barely even hit. So... And it was probably just bouncing and bouncing, bouncing off of it as the head was going up. So we probably ought to go ahead and replace, we'll replace both these valves, put two new valves in it. Just cause they, they had no, they had no tension on it, right? They were just sitting there kind of like hovering cause the engine was running, it was pretty violent. There was explosions going on crap. And the piston, if it did touch it, it would just touch it straight on. Now these valves are not canted, they're level square. They're square in the head. The piston's square. The deck surface where it touches is square. So all it does, puts it under extreme stress and just pushes it straight. I don't know, what do you think of that little area right there? I don't know if I wanna to subscribe to the thought that that might be mushroomed out a little. Hmm. I don't know. There's a little bit of lining on the on the cylinder wall. Hmm. All right, there you go. So it's probably a thousandth deep. Did smack it. 
Looks like no damage here. I don't know. I mean, sure, you can take a look at this and see. It looks like there's like pretty much no damage. Dirty. It's been in service. Take one last look at the valve guide. Should blow it out. It's like there's oil in there. You lost your keys? Yeah. I think they're probably in the side by side of the school. No way. Hey, no way there's something going on in there. That might be a little bit of dirt down at the bottom down there, down here. But no indication of up and down travel, of galling, of it sticking or anything like that. No, it's all just a little dirty. I haven't bring, bring a brush through it at all. Just pulled the valve out. You can tell the stem's all freaking dirty. I'd just be dealing with just a single spring failure. I mean, it's freaking drag having a machine. Damn it. This is like picture book stuff happens for sure. Enough with the broken valve spring. Joey's got it buttoned up. Oh my God. Battery dead? Yeah. Uh. Somebody left the key in the center. Seat. Somebody left the key on. Damn battery's dead. What is he doing? Chugging. Help us, guys. Let's fix this five four. What is this, a Ford? <laughs> you know, I kept telling myself that this thing is awesome for all kinds of stuff and i don't even want to get it out because it's very easy to get dirty man right now okay that f-150 you can't see this backwards in the camera huh? yeah. once again this is the south shop open like it's summertime i guess joey thinks this is not a pneumonia hole it's just a nice wonderful open area <laughs> It's kind of warm, but he's got both oil burners running with the door wide open. They just, uh, he lives free here. Joey's been running this. Cody is in Florida right now. He took off, said, I'm going to sunshine. I'm sick and tired of, uh, I want to be warm for a minute. I don't even know all the horses' names. They have names, obviously. Oh, traffic. There's not a lot of traffic on this street either. This was the beginnings of what this shop was on this property, Don's shop. Right here, this is where he started. This was, I think he was watching YouTube videos. He was watching our YouTube videos on there, right there, working on trucks here. Then he built that, then he built that. He's been over here in Gas Burner World and I just kind of come over here every now and then and kind of bug him a little bit, razz him, talk a bunch of crap, and then I leave. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Shows you how much I know. I brought a creeper over here. Joey's like quick. They lift everything. They lift everything to pull in here. They lift it up off the ground. Remember, I'm not used to that. I've got my little, had my little bitty lift. And all we did was lift cabs with it. He's like, they'll lift it up to change the oil. Not even joking. Ah, <laughs> uh, come in a little. I'm a little out. Put mine in the wrong spot. Just air. All right, you're good. Let's shut that ammonia hole. Oh, I got a flash on. 360 going into the into the muffler. Oh, let it go. 
out right. 670. The center peak's got to 600. Up top we're 650. So it's pretty even all the way through the cats. We got one there and one there. Oh, let it calibrate. Six hundred degrees up top. And the center is five hundred and ninety between the two heat shields, so a little cooler. Five twenty. Six eighty coming out of the coming out of the cat. Coming out of the cat is just as hot as going into the cat. Well, oh, I'm looking at it like I'm gonna. Got kind of used to seeing it from that view. Yeah, I mean, we're 680 degrees on the back side of the catalytic converters. So. And 600 degrees in front of them. You would think the power balance would show bad. I mean, unless they're all, like they had bad gas ran through them, and they're all the same amount of nasty. They had gas sitting in them, and they all got a little nasty, a little gummy.